um, so today uh, to talk about um, their experience at, at Baptist Health Corbin, we have Sherry Mays. Uh, we're honored uh, to have Sherry, uh, Vice President and Chief Nursing Officer for Baptist Health Corbin. Sherry's been with the hospital for 38 years, and she stated she'd never seen anything like this before in regards to the COVID crisis. Thank you, Sherry, for joining us today uh, to give um, a firsthand account of what you all are seeing. And as you're on the way up, let me say thank you. On behalf of all Kentuckians, thank you, thank you, and thank you. This is a very dark time, and you and your coworkers are our beacon of hope. Thank you, Governor, for having me today. Um, just wanted to share something about our situation in southeastern Kentucky. Uh, you know, we have four small hospitals in that area, and uh, two of us are bigger than some of the others, but uh, we are all overwhelmed at this time. Uh, share our specific situation at Baptist Health Corbin. Uh, this morning when we came in, we had a census of 175. All of our ICU beds, our PCU beds, our telemetry beds, our med surge beds are all full. We have no more capacity in those beds. And um, we've made the decision to close our surgery department to allow us some extra space down there should it be needed and uh, use, utilize that staff to care for patients as well. Uh, currently, we have 65 COVID patients with 14 of them on ventilators. Um, only six of them have been fully vaccinated. None of the others have been vaccinated. Uh, and talking about ventilators, we have 14 in use. We have 10 more available, and we've ordered five more in case we should need them. Um, we're seeing more uh, positive obstetric patients during this surge, which means that we have to take care of those babies require additional assistance and care as well as the mothers. And we're also seeing a younger age group as well. The 20 to 60 year olds are really sick this time and many of them have, are ventilated. And as the governor said earlier, we have lost some as well in the earlier ages. Um, we've opened additional six CCU beds to accommodate the patients that are ventilated. And uh, as of today, um, we are taking care of those patients and we're looking at expanding that again. Uh, we've also opened our monoclonal therapy clinic five days a week. We were actually doing five days a week and just from like 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. We've now expanded that from 8 to 4.30 to accommodate those patients. And we're seeing 30 to 40 of those patients a day, which keeps them out of our ER, hopefully, and keeps them out of the hospital as inpatients. Um, Wild Health Testing Center, we opened that this past weekend, and uh, it's actually opened on our campus. And I know within two hours of it being open the other morning, we had already tested 25 people. I don't know how many they've tested today. Um, our, uh, we have a 28 bed ED unit, and we're seeing 150 to 170 patients a day right now through our 28 bed ED unit. So, you know, we've pulled, we've extended our staff trying to pull additional staff in. We've done all kinds of creative things with our staff to ensure that our patients get the care that they need. And uh, the other thing I would like to ask is, uh, please get your vaccination. That's the one thing you can do for our community. And the other thing, I would, I'm sorry, but the other thing that you can actually do for our community is pray for our patients mm -hmm. and pray for our staff and our physicians that they'll be resilient during this pandemic and that we can get through it as quickly as possible because our patients are really sick. And until you've really experienced what's going on in the hospitals and the devastation that our staff see. It's very difficult on our nurses and we actually provide therapy services for our nurses to ensure that they're capable and feel functional that they can take care of our patients. So thank you all for having me. I appreciate it. 